This is the Jason Walker Show. Two-time National Sports Media Association Montana Sportscaster of the Year and three-time loser, the Jason Walker Show. The best local and statewide sports coverage featuring the biggest guests from Montana. Flint Rasmussen uh, joining us here on the Jason Walker Show. It's freaking exhausting, too. You used to dance a lot more. Yeah, I know, lady. I'm 51 years old now. The NAI Hall of Famer Mike Van Deese joining us here Jason Walker Show. And is it just a deal where quarterbacks have to be good golfers? Well, that's all they have time for. They don't work out. They don't lift weight. <laughs> they don't do anything else. They might as well go get on the golf course and at least have some fun. And from across the country. Doug Gottlieb, our guest here on the Jason Walker Show. End of the day, remember, it, it's your show. It's got your name on it. Howie Mandel, our guest here. Jason Walker. Deal or no deal. The Jason Walker Show. Hey, what up? Happy Tuesday. The Jason Walker Show inside the Above All Handyman Services Man Cave. If you need anything done around the house, Get a hold of Above All Handyman Services. They will take care of you from top to bottom, inside and out. we got a good show coming up today. Hunter Sparts is going to join us. Montana Tech offensive lineman who's headed off to New England Patriots rookie minicamp to try out and get a spot on the team. We're also going to chat with uh, Nicole Reby, Helena High tennis coach, and uh, get an update on the Bengals. You can watch on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. You can listen on Podbean, Network One, Sports, TreasureStateRadio.com. Go to JasonWalkerShow.com. You can weigh in anytime on the Twitter, at JWalkerSports. Our phone number, 406-209-1267. And our email is Jason at JasonWalkerShow.com. All right. Spent a couple hours down in Boulder last night, Jefferson High School Board meeting. And... Clint Lang is back. What everybody's wanted for the last two weeks. He was, uh, first the board had to have a motion to withdraw their previous motion, not to renew his contract for the upcoming football season. And then after much public comment and uh, comments from the board, uh, they voted again five to two in favor this time with uh, a couple of board members changing their votes, uh, votes, Buster Bullock among them, as well as uh, uh, Kyrie Russ. Uh, Danny Morris, Larry Rash still voted against the rehiring of Clint Lang. Why, you ask, was Clint Lang not rehired in the first place? Well, A.J. Ekman summed it up best in, uh, on, a, on a tweet last night. Meeting summary. The opposition, I'll even show it to you. The opposition was upset about a passionate coach using profanity. Any complaints weren't properly handled by the board, causing Lang to be blindsided. School board members who claimed to vote on behalf of the community upset about people voicing their disapproval. That's uh, essentially what happened. So, (laughs) Clint Lang's back. There were 15, 20 public comments last night. Uh, Two were against the rehiring. Um, And a lot of it had to do with the uh, code of conduct that all coaches and players sign. Now, I'm not going to say all, but a majority of coaches at any level of high school, college, swear. Okay? It's not directed at the player personally. They don't call him names using bad language, okay? Coaches are passionate. They get fired up. Players are passionate. They get fired up. People swear. I got fired two and a half years ago for swearing on Twitter because some jack wagon asked if my daughter was mine. And in a heated moment, it happens. So if that's the reason that Coach Lang was originally not renewed, it's a pretty lame-ass one, in my opinion. And I'm allowed to have an opinion. So that was basically the crux. Jared Padmos, former player at Jefferson, current coach, assistant, 
and uh, uh, soon-to-be math teacher out there got up. He wasn't going to say anything. And he got up in the public comment and said, look, there's a chain of command. And if that chain of command's not fired, uh, followed, you know, if there's a complaint, it needs to go first to the head coach, right? Then to the athletic director, then to school administration, then on to the board. Well, the board members, Danny Morris in her say, statement saying that they hear a lot of complaints about coach because of whatever reason. Well, as Coach Padmos would say, you have to assume that's hearsay because that didn't come directly in the chain of command. There wasn't a formal complaint issued. There were no complaints formally sub submitted, as far as I know, about Coach Lang and his language. But Coach was re reinstated, rehired by a 5-2 to two vote. Again, Danny Morris, Larry Rash saying no. And it brings me to this moment that we talked about last week on the show with Clint Lang. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull it up and play it. This is from Hoosiers. Great, great movie. And there's a connection to this that I'll explain here in a second. But here's the, here's the line from Jimmy Chitwood. I play. Coach stays. He goes, I go. He goes, I go. Well, there was a statement last night. The best line of the night came from current Jefferson High sophomore Jack Johnson. Namesake, grandson of the legendary CMR coach. And he said, essentially, this is our team. This is our coach. And there were a couple other players that got up and said, I don't want to play for anybody else. Now, the school board is supposed to represent the community, right? Well, if they're getting complaints then why don't they, as school board members, go then to that coach or follow the chain of command? And that's essentially what happened in Jefferson and at Boulder High. Some people were upset because Coach Lang cussed. Okay. There was no complaints about playing time for little Johnny. None of that. Okay. So Coach Lang... Rehired. So it brings me to this. Five to two vote. You know, it, 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 he was rehired. Now, I've been a big proponent of Coach Lang over the last two weeks, over the last eight years, really, is covering Jefferson High. I've made my feelings known about the decision that was made a couple of weeks ago. I had Coach Lang, along with a few former players and opponents uh, on the Jason Walker show, to talk about the original decision. I reached out to the four board members that originally voted not to renew Lang's contract, inviting them on the show. Not one responded. Not one. The husband of board member Danny Morris, Michael Morris, did email me a week ago and said he'd come on the show. And I will read you his email. Our email chain goes exactly like this. I can't show it because it's got his phone number on it, and I don't know technology-wise how to black it out. Michael Morris emailed me on April 24th. It's a Sunday night at 931 and said, let me know if you want to come on your show, question mark. To which I replied, Mr. Morris, are you on the board as well? To which he replied, no, I am not on the board. And then I said, okay, thanks. Well, Mrs. Morris is the one, along with the others on the board, that I'd like on the show. Okay? During the board meeting last night, Danny Morris said that I denied anyone in opposition to appear on the show. That is not true. She also added that I was told by members of the administration to not have any board members or her husband, Michael, on the show. That is a fabrication of the truth. I did speak to a member of the Jefferson administration a couple of times in the week after Coach Lang was let go. 
In one of those two conversations, the administrator apparently mentioned that he did not think it would be a good idea for the board members nor Michael Morris to come on. I don't recall that. However, he did confirm that he did say that to me in a phone call and did tell the Morrises the same thing in a meeting they had with him. Again, I don't recall him saying that. I will say that nobody, including me, was told to not come on, have anybody come on this show. The message was that the administrator didn't think it would be a good idea. That's a big difference. Now, to that point, Michael Morris thought that after the meeting, it would be a good idea to confront me in front of the uh, trophy case there at Jefferson High, outside the gym, uh, shook my hand and said, I still think you're a chicken shit for not letting him come on. Then he called me a liar about my conversation with the administrator after I told him that I didn't recall being told that it was not a good idea for him or the board to appear. We then went and talked to that administrator, like I said, who did admit to saying that. And again, I don't remember it, to which I was called a liar by Mr. Morris. And I said, do you want me to, to, to recall everything I said two hours ago on the show? I don't. Uh, he got in my face, started leaning into me, uh, accused me of having no integrity, uh, also said he wanted uh, I asked, why would you even want to come on the show? And he said he didn't want to talk about Coach Lang. This was last week when he emailed me. This is what he said last night then. He didn't want to talk about Coach Lang. Well, then why the heck would you want to come on? That was the top of the conversation for the last week and a half. Uh, In addition, Mr. Morris also brought up the fact, (laughs) this is funny, brought up the fact that I had been fired at the radio station for my social media comments. And do you want to talk about the other five times that I've been fired in nearly 30 years of doing media between radio and television? It happens. I mean, we can talk about me getting fired two and a half years ago. We can talk about me getting fired in 1996, 1998 for wearing blue jeans during business hours at a radio station. We can talk about that. We can talk about the fact that I was fired at the TV station in Great Falls for quote-unquote being too entertaining for sports. (laughs) We can talk about it all. You can call this show. You can come on. I invited you on last night. Come on. But here's the thing. You fail to recall that I did email or message your wife, Danny. I also emailed or messaged Buster Bullock, Larry Rash, Kyrie Russ. Every day on the show, I specifically said, we welcome all comments. Nobody called, nobody emailed, nobody texted. There were no tweets, etc. Any negativity towards Clint Lang was not relayed to this show. Here's another thing too, Mr. Morris. Like Doug Gottlieb says in my open, At the end of the day, it's my show. And while you and the other board members refuse to come on, this is an opinion show. Okay? It's called the Jason Walker Show. It's licensed under Jason Walker Media, LLC. I own it. I operate it. It's mine. I can choose who I want to appear, and yet I offered you a chance to come on the show. I offered board members... I offered <laughs> you, I offered any, any comments, positive or negative, towards Clint Lang to come on the show in the last two weeks and not one appeared. Now, Mr. Morris, if you can keep the language and name calling out of the conversation, you can come on anytime. Other than that, Mr. Morris, if you don't like it, start your own show. I will give you the name of the company I use to buy my equipment. I'll give you, I'll I'll, I'll help you get set up. You can start your own show. We can talk about whatever you want. Or you can. Just like I can here on the Jason Walker Show. Okay? 
This is not the Clint Lang show. It's not the Mike Morris show. It's the Jason Walker show. And I can have whoever I want on this show. 99% of the time we keep this show fun, positive, enlightening. We talk to great kids. We talk to great coaches about what's going on in the field of play. But when there's a travesty because a coach wasn't rehired because he, he cussed, whoop de do People cuss all the time. Including me. I got fired for dropping a couple of F-bombs because some guy in Billings questioned my daughter's DNA. Who cares? It happens. You have my number. You have my email. I give out email number and tweet handle, Twitter handle, on this show every day. Every day. I take Facebook comments. Um, Sue, no, I've never been fired for bad golf. (laughs) <laughs> I have, I was, however, kicked off a bowling team last night by my mom because I don't have an established handicap and they need a good bowler. So there's that. But aside from all of that, you can come on this show. I welcome people. When everything was going on with COVID, I have had different opinions on this show. If you want to have a civil discussion, I'm all about it. The only thing the administrator said to me that he, that I don't remember him saying, but he confirmed it to me and Mr. Morris, was he didn't think it would be a good idea for the board members or Mike Morris to come on this show. That's all he said. I'm not a liar. You want to call out my integrity? Then we have an issue. You want to call me a liar? We have an issue. But you're more than welcome to come on this show. You're more than welcome to start your own. And like I said, I'll help you get started. But what it all boils down to is a a great coach and teacher was reinstated. And that's what really mattered. Because the only one, Clint Lang said it himself last week on the show, the only ones affected really by the decision, aside from his family, were the kids. And people said after I I tweeted out, you know, breaking news, Clint Lang rehired, uh, a guy said, that's great, but I'd be looking for another job anyway. To which I said, coach, coach said on the show last week, he wanted this job specifically for those kids at Jefferson High School. For those kids. But I welcome all conversation here on the Jason Walker Show. End of the day. But if you can't handle it, that's your problem, not mine. All right. Congratulations to, uh, to Clint Lang, rehired. All right. Let's change the subject, shall we? The opening segment of the Jason Walker Show brought to you, as always, by Montana Custom Log Homes, the premier log home company in the industry with three distinct divisions. So you can create the log home of your dreams and your budget. You've got milled log. You've got handcrafted. You've got timber frame. Check them out yourcustomlog.com to get started today. When we come back here on the Jason Walker Show, we're going to talk to a Montana Tech offensive lineman that thought his career was done after his final game of uh, the season in November last year. And then a conversation with his brother changed his mind, and now he's got a chance to prove himself in the NFL with the New England Patriots. Hunter Sparks, Tech lineman, joins the show. Nicole Reby on the way as well on this day in history and much more. This is... The Jason Walker Show. Coming right back. Strength, beauty, grit, superior craftsmanship. Our homes have it all. At Montana Custom Log Homes, if you can dream it, we can build it. With three divisions and over 50 years experience, we've got you covered. 
from a showcase home to a small cabin, we make your vision a reality. Because every cowboy wants a castle for his queen. Montana Custom Log Homes, crafting homes that last for generations. Father's Day is coming fast, and what more would that great dad in your life want than a full detail from Auto Concepts? Or maybe he would just prefer a lift kit. It's also camping season, and now is the perfect time to outfit that rig with a winch just in case. Auto Concepts is your home for everything for your vehicle, including updating your car stereo system too. Auto Concepts also has gift certificates for dad or yourself. Visit autoconceptshelena.com. Auto Concepts, the auto enhancement professionals. Everyone knows about Dinners Done Right and the convenience of the cook and carry cuisines. It's so easy to just stop by and you have something for dinner that night. But there's also one more thing you need to know about. Dinners Done Right Grab and Go Salad Bar. Yes, I said salad bar. Always the freshest ingredients along with a daily soup and nacho bar too. So the next time you are in a rush or you just want to eat healthy, stop by Dinners Done Right for the soup, salad, and nacho bar. For monthly menus and more info, it's dinnersdoneright.com. Who doesn't love being number one? When your team's dominating the standings or your favorite band rocks the charts at number one, it feels good, right? Kind of like how it feels when you have auto insurance with State Farm. Because making you feel like number one is an honor your local State Farm agent takes seriously. Through the good times and not so good, your State Farm agent's proud to be here to help life go right. Call State Farm Agent Mike Miller in Helena today. Storewide savings are what you'll find when you shop for new home furnishings at Rutgers Furniture. This means tremendous values on Helena's largest in-stock selection of home furnishings. When you shop Rutgers, you'll find storewide savings on the furniture you want for every room in your home. And you'll also find our selection of Serta Eye Comfort, the most comfortable beds in Helena. 12-month financing is available with approved credit on most purchases over $299. Ask for details. You'll find storewide savings at Rutgers Furniture, 1010 Dearborn, Helena. Welcome back to the Jason Walker Show. Welcome back, Jason Walker Show on a Tuesday. Still to come, Nicole Reby will join us, Helena High Tennis Coach. And on this day in history tomorrow, Alex Eshelman. And uh, also Mike Miller, Capital Softball. Try to get a hold of Ryan Swenson, too, for Capital Tennis. We're nearing the end of the uh, season for uh, spring sports. So, Well, there's one dude that thought his career was over uh, playing football when he finished his last season, last game at Montana Tech. His name is Hunter Sparks. He, uh, he's got himself a chance to... Prove himself now with the New England Patriots. And he joins us on the Mike Miller State Farm Hotline to talk about when he knew and what's it, what is it going to be like to try out for Bill Belichick. Hunter Sparks now here on the Jason Walker Show. Perfect. All right, Hunter. Um, first off, I mean, congratulations. And uh, take me through this process of uh, of the weekend where you become an unrestricted uh, or undrafted free agent signing with the Patriots. So I haven't actually signed with the Patriots. I just received an invite for their mini camp. So I haven't signed with anyone yet, but invited to their mini camp to try and hopefully prove myself and then earn something going on from there. But hung out and waited to hear something. And then Saturday – after the draft, got the call that I'd be invited to that, so that was awesome. You, uh, there's a great article 406mtsports.com uh, did with you, I believe yesterday or Sunday or over the weekend. But uh, in it, you were you were basically done. You were going to be done with football after uh, Tech's last game, and then all of a sudden it was, wait a second, I got a chance here. Uh, was it your brother that talked you into uh, going down to MSU for uh, for their pro day? So my brother kind of he watched that last game. I had that uh, play where pulled around and ran with our uh, running back down the sideline and 
after the game, we were sitting at dinner, and he just kind of asked who I thought about playing at the next level, and I kind of never really thought about it. Like, didn't think about going forward just because I've always been told I'm too small, not or height-wise at least. So kind of decided I would push that to the back burner and graduate with my engineering degree and then go work with that and just kind of thought about it and was like, well, I've always wondered. And um, from there, I decided I was going to start training. I reached out to Steve Thaler over here in Missoula at Thaler Sports Pacific and I uh, reached out to him and started training with him. Um, and then after talking with him, we were able to get into the Montana State Pro Day and go over there and just kind of get a chance to perform in front of some teams and went from there. Which is pretty cool. And, I mean, obviously there was a lot of guys, a lot of scouts that are looking at all the guys from the Bobcats. But, you know, for you to get noticed, I, I think is pretty impressive as well. And, and you were right there with those guys from MSU as far as reps and bench press. Chase Benson, I think, the only one to beat you out. But – um, what, what opened your eyes about that pro day? Um, in terms of just, just everything in general or. Yeah. I mean, you know, talking and seeing these guys, you know, at the next level of FCS football, but you know, NAI football is no joke. I I've covered it for eight years. I love it. But what impressed you about the way that those guys were there and, and, and how you competed with them basically. Um, you definitely notice there's like everyone there is pretty well mentally prepared, locked in, uh, focused for that. So it was cool just being able to get to perform with those guys and they didn't treat me any different than, uh, the rest of their teammates. So if I felt like I fit right in with those guys, they were super welcoming and super cool to me, uh, the whole time. And so didn't feel any different, just went out there, tried my best to perform and ended up having a pretty good day. Talking with uh, Montana Tech uh, lineman Hunter Sparks, who's headed off to uh, Patriots mi uh, rookie mini camp, I guess, basically tryout camp coming up here in about 10 days or so. And uh, take, tell me about this phone call. Take me through it on Saturday when you get that call from the Patriots saying, hey, man, we want you to come uh, come try out for us. Uh, so it came through with my, uh, my agent, uh, reached out to me uh, after the draft and said that they uh, they were interested in inviting me to rookie mini camp and just stay tuned. He was going to get some more details coming over to me after that. But it was it was exciting. Definitely know that I, I'm going to get an opportunity to at least prove myself. It's pretty cool. And oh, for sure. Um, how much of a factor did Kyle Sampson have in this? Because he's a he's such a great great coach. Um, but how how much of a factor did he play? Uh, Coach Sampson helped me a ton getting into the Montana State Pro Day. I uh, reached out to some of his contacts as well as uh, Steve Thaler, my trainer. Both They both know the uh, uh, strength coach over at Montana State, so they reached out to them and uh, helped me get into that Pro Day. And he's been awesome about it, just been helping me out through the process, just kind of wishing me good luck going forward. But uh, they've been great. Uh, how much have you ramped up workouts since uh... – in the last few months here? Uh, training usually five, five, five days a week, um, Sunday through Thursday, focus on lifting three days and running two days a week. Just make sure we're in shape all together and make sure I'm in football shape. But I really enjoyed it. Just focused on trying to get bigger, stronger, faster. And uh, you can't get much taller, but 6'3". Um, I'm only 5'5", five, five, so you've got me by about 8 inches, I guess, but uh, or 10 inches. I can't do math. That's why you're the engineer. Um, but when you come from uh, Green River, Wyoming, and it's such a great town, and we know a lot about Green River, its history and everything, but how many guys from Green River, Wyoming, have had a shot in the league? I'm not too familiar with how many have gone from Green River and played or even gotten a chance. Um, just a couple people I know have went and played D1, but I'm not too familiar with how many people have gotten to play at the next level. Gotcha. Uh, the kids from Montana or, you know, playing in Montana have had a little bit of success with New England Patriots. Um, uh, Dane Fletcher, for one, comes to mind. Have you reached out to him at all yet? I haven't. I haven't been in contact with him. I haven't met him or heard anything from him. So. Okay. 
Um, what has everybody said about uh, working out and, and, and trying out in front of uh, Coach Belichick? Uh, it's, just, it's just exciting. Everyone's been pretty encouraging, just wishing me good luck. It should be a good time getting out there, just work out and try and earn my, earn my place amongst the team. When you, uh, when you were growing up, and even now, what's your favorite NFL team? Uh, growing up, my I lived in Pittsburgh for nine years. So okay. I've been a Steelers fan growing up, but that's, that's where I was. Is that why you wear 75? Wasn't that mean Joe Green? Uh, that was his number. I, that was his number. That's not why I wear it. I, <laughs> okay. I grew up, my brother always was wearing number five, and so I – uh, grew up playing basketball wearing the number 25. He wore five and 25, so I really wanted to wear one of those. And then coming to Tech, I didn't really have the option to wear 25 as a lineman, so right. I switched to 75. What do you enjoy about sticking your fingers in the uh, turf or in the dirt? I mean, there's some there's some fields in the NAI and in the Frontier Conference that uh, everybody's changing to turf, but what do you enjoy the most about putting your fingers down and, and pancaking, uh, you know, a D lineman or a, or a linebacker? I definitely pride myself in physical football. I've always enjoyed getting to be a part of the line and be a part of the most physical group. Uh, I just really enjoy that. And I also enjoy the mental aspect of it. There's a lot of technique and hands and footwork that's involved in it. So I kind of like how it's a balancing act amongst uh, physicality as well as technique. Hunter Sparks, our guest here, Tech offensive lineman, heading off to uh, New England Patriots rookie uh, tryout camp, mini camp. You know, when you bring that up with the technique and, and former Carroll offensive line coach Jim Hogan and I used to talk about this a lot, but, you know, if your feet are in the wrong place by even two inches, I mean, you can miss a block. It's crazy to think about that, right? Absolutely, yeah. Technique is a big thing in footwork to uh, level you're at, little man wins is always something I've been taught. So everything matters. It, it's just it blows my mind when you think about that, and you know how offensive linemen stagger and their feet, and and it's got to be a certain distance and certain plays, and and it just it's always it's always just amazed me at what you guys do. I mean, quarterbacks get the credit, the skill position guys get the credit, but we know the games are won in the trenches. Yeah, absolutely. I- it's a team sport for sure. I mean, you can't – Coach Sampson's always put it this way. You, you're not going to fight someone with an open hand. You can't play together as an open hand. you got to play together as a fist. So you got one finger not brought together in that fist. It's not going to be very effective. So it, everyone builds off each other. Everyone's just as important as the next guy. What was it like for you playing in the Frontier Conference? Because it's so good. I mean, every game, and, it, you know, it didn't matter who you're playing, but anybody can beat anybody in the Frontier. What was your experience like? Absolutely. It's exciting. Every game, you can't count anyone out. That's That's been something we definitely focused on at Tech, was not to underestimate someone that you're playing against just based on record or anything. Anyone could beat anyone you saw it last year with. Northern beating Rocky. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, and and beating Eastern Oregon, you know, <laughs> what's a five-overtime game. What stands out in all your uh, career at Tech? What game stands out the most? Um, I think one of my favorite games was just my senior game. It was just nice to end out on a win, finish out with the guys, have a good time, defense put up a shutout, just – Pretty cool to finish that way. Hunter Sparks joining us. A couple final questions for you. But when you look back at your career and and moving forward, you know, you talk about the play against Northern where you're running, you know, stride for stride with, with the running back for the ore diggers there. But when you get around a corner, if you're, a, if you're pulling on a play, for instance, do you look at, at, I mean, do your eyes light up when you see, a safety or a, or a linebacker coming over and you're like, I'm in this going to lay this guy out. Absolutely. You got to <laughs> love getting the chance to be a big guy running in space, just getting the chance to lead your running back through the hole and get on the outside. It's one of my favorite parts of football. One of my favorite plays personally is anything that involves pulling. What was the hardest hit you've delivered in the last few years? There's been a couple. I think one of the big ones was just last year against College of Idaho, driving a DB down and into the sidelines. So that was one of my favorites. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, you guys get excited for that stuff. I mean, you know, you, you see the, the old NFL films highlights when safeties are, you know, drilling a wide receiver coming across the middle, but linemen get just as excited of, over big hits like that. Absolutely. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, w- when do you leave? What's those three days going to be, four days going to be like uh, with New England, and when do you come back? Uh, still waiting to get details on leaving and everything that's getting there, but should be pretty exciting. Just a lot of mental reps. Uh, rookie mini camps are not padded, so focus on all the mental reps, technique, try and be as refined as possible, and uh, just make sure to go out there and represent myself well. Is it a little different working out and in, in not in pads? I mean, when you can't really show your full potential um, because you're not, it's not contact. It, it's, it's basically, you know, it, it's, the, it's like the first couple of days of a spring practice or a, or a you know, fall camp, basically, right? Absolutely. It's definitely a more technical uh, aspect of the whole thing. Of course, you've got that engineering degree to fall back on. Um, and how much of that, Hunter, plays into the football aspect of the mental game? Um, tech, we have a lot of guys that their engineering majors just kind of allow us to play a little bit more intricate football. So that's been a big part of our program is being able to run a little more detailed and tricky stuff. When you're looking at that engineering, and I mean, can you apply any of the of the physics and the laws of engineering to football? I mean, I mean as far as angles and and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. Football is definitely a game of angles. Low man wins. Yeah, beating someone to a point. Just everything about that. Everything in life has to do with <laughs> physics, and so that definitely helps being able to transition from engineering onto the field. Well, hey, man, it's, uh, it's been a pleasure to chat with you. We wish you the best of luck. There's been a few guys in the NAI from the frontier that have gone on to great careers in the NFL, and we're hoping you're the next one. Absolutely. Thank you. I appreciate it. That is uh, Hunter Sparks joining us on the Jason Walker Show, Mike Miller State Farm Hotline. All of our guests appear via the Mike Miller State Farm Hotline. It's not just a bundle. It's your home. It's your auto. It's your life. Get a hold of Mike Miller State Farm in Helena today. Just got this uh, great message on Facebook um, it says, uh, your show showed up on my feed. I listened in amazement. Are we still firing and rehiring people over words? I just watched an interview from 1986, I believe, with Frank Zappa on CNN's Crossfire. Three guys were wigging out over words on a Prince record. Frank tried to convince them that the regulation of words is just wrong. Sorry your school people haven't figured this out and would risk losing a good teacher slash coach over words. As someone who is not offended by cuss words and use them liberally, it's past time for folks to just get over it. By the way, good show. Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate your comments. Uh, There you go. That's (laughs) uh, Clint Lang is back. That's all that matters. Take a quick break. We'll come back. This segment brought to you by Rutgers Furniture. Make the quality choice for your home at Rutgers Furniture, 1010 Dearborn, Helena. And when we return, we're going to talk tennis. Nicole Reby, excited for the Bengal boys. Why? She'll explain next when we come back here on the Jason Walker Show. Hang on. Storewide savings are what you'll find when you shop for new home furnishings at Rutgers Furniture. This means tremendous values on Helena's largest in-stock selection of home furnishings. When you shop Rutgers, you'll find storewide savings on the furniture you want for every room in your home. And you'll also find our selection of Serta Eye Comfort, the most comfortable beds in Helena. 12-month financing is available with approved credit on most purchases over $299. Ask for details. You'll find storewide savings at Rutgers Furniture, 1010 Dearborn, Helena. Yes, it's true that Montana is a long way from the Gulf Coast, but you can bring that Cajun flavor home with a stop at Cafe Zydeco. From po' boys to classic sandwiches, Cafe Zydeco has all the best Cajun in town. Are you in the mood for seafood gumbo or crawfish etouffee? Maybe you're craving jambalaya with some shrimp and grits. Head in for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, or call ahead for pickup or delivery. Cafe Zydeco will fix all your southern cravings, even on a chilly Montana day. Cafe Zydeco is a proud sponsor of the Jason Walker Show. Who doesn't love being number one? When your team's dominating the standings or your favorite band rocks the charts at number one, it feels good, right? Kind of like how it feels when you have auto insurance with State Farm. 
Because making you feel like number one is an honor your local State Farm agent takes seriously. Through the good times and not so good, your State Farm agent's proud to be here to help life go right. Call State Farm agent Mike Miller in Helena today. Strength, beauty, grit, superior craftsmanship. Our homes have it all. At Montana Custom Log Homes, if you can dream it, we can build it. With three divisions and over 50 years experience, we've got you covered. From a showcase home to a small cabin, we make your vision a reality. Because every cowboy wants a castle for his queen. Montana Custom Log Homes, crafting homes that last for generations. This is the Jason Walker Show. It is. It is the Jason Walker Show. Oh, gosh, I love doing this. I absolutely love this job. It's not even a job. By the way, great article from Jeff Welsh up at uh, 406mtsports.com. The headline is, uh, Yo, parents, suck on a lollipop. You're bulldozing high school sports. And it's, uh, it's pretty accurate. I mean, we talk about uh, Clint Lang, but we also, in you know, Frenchtown, Anaconda, White Sulphur Springs, had coaches relieved of duties um, to, quote, Welsh, kowtowing to parents upset about playing time, holding kids accountable for disruptive behavior and or other issues, end quote. Or language. A coach cost. Oh, no. What are we going to do? Look, there's certain times and place for it, right? But come on, people. I mean, think of all the great classic songs that we'd have to get rid of because of innuendo or swear words, right? I mean, Elton John, The Bitch is Back, great song. And then you think about all the great coaches that aren't renewed or rehired because of language or because they're fired up on the sidelines. Now, look, there's coaches that screw up, you know, morally all the time. But if a coach swears, who gives a rat's ass? All right. I know one coach who doesn't swear. I don't think I've ever heard anything negative come out of this coach's mouth. <laughs> Very positive. All coaches are great. I love talking to every coach we have on this show. And that includes our next guest. She coaches the Helena High tennis team. She is in her first season as the head coach. It's been an up and down year. But uh, the Bengal boys picked up a big win over the weekend, and uh, she's very excited to talk about it. Joining us now on the Mike Miller State Farm Hotline, the great Helena High tennis coach, Nicole Reby. All right, Coach, I told you I'd get you back on. Just a few short days later, here you are yet again. How was the weekend? Because you guys got to travel to Missoula and see a lot of different tennis players and a lot of different teams. Uh, before we talk about your specific teams, um, take me through the weekend on Saturday over there in Missoula. Well, um, we really only saw two teams. It was uh, just a double duel against Billings West and Belgrade. So that's, that's all we played. That's all we saw. But that's all, that's all you needed to see, right? You know, I would love to see more of the Missoula schools. I really would. I mean, yeah. nothing against Missoula Big Sky, but it's always great to see Hellgate and Sentinel as well. And it's it's tough now that in the AA we do have 16 teams. So in the short season that we have, it's really hard to be able to have a chance to see everybody before state. Uh, Nicole Reby joining us, Helena High tennis coach. Uh, the boys picked up a much-needed victory, and they won earlier in the season, but this was the time where everybody had full rosters for really for the first time. And it's an impressive win for the guys because it shows them what they can do on the courts. Exactly. I, if anything, it was certainly a, a confidence, build, confidence builder for a lot of them. That, you know, they've been putting in the practice. Some of them have had such close matches. And, you know, a few points here and there, it really could be a different match. It could, you know, be a different game. But I just think just having the confidence to realize that, hey, we, we actually can get this done. We dug in. Some of them played some really long points and great deuce points. 
was able to hold it together mentally and really start to put it all together. So it was just great to see the reactions from them going, oh, my gosh, we were in such a big hole after winning the first set. We let the second set slip away. But then, you know, we got it together and we came back, had a tight tie break, but we managed to do it. So for some of those guys, it was just great to see that. When you're when you're watching these kids that that have been close and haven't really gotten over the top yet, what's that like for you as a coach? I mean, is I know you 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 can't contain your smile very well. So, um, what's that like for you watching it? What are your insides like? What's your head doing? What's your gut doing? You know, it's just so happy because you know that they can pull it off. And it's just that mental part of the game is so tough. And it's it's so hard to coach. It's so hard to work with. And especially as teenagers, you know, just really, really trying to stay focused, not dwelling on the past. And just being able to, to finally see that and just being so excited for them and realizing that, you know, yes, this is what we work for. This is what we talk about, not only in the, you know, skills and tactics, but that mental fortitude to just stay with it. Don't get down, especially doubles players. Help your partner out. And so it's just so gratifying and so rewarding to see their smiles and just see that they're like, yes, I can get through this wall. So it's it's awesome. Nicole Reby joining us, Bengals tennis coach, Mike Miller, State Farm Hotline. Uh, uh, so what, what was your takeaways from the uh, the two duels? against West and Belgrade. Right. So uh, Billings West, um, both boys and girls were, were very strong. We got some really great competition in with, um, you know, both singles and doubles play. Um, Belgrade has a phenomenal girls singles player, Bella Anderson. She actually placed third at state last year. And so, um, you know, Kale had, Kale had her hands full at number one singles. Um, you know, she, she battled so hard and, and she did as the best that she could. Um, we had a great matchup for our number one girls doubles as well. Um, they ended up dropping the third set tie break, um, 10, 12. I mean, it was six, four, four, six, 12, 10. Again, it could have gone either way. So it was just really good. I think for us to and near the end of the season, start getting some stiff competition and realizing, you know, <laughs> a little bit of work, some mechanics, maybe some tactics, um, but really that mental toughness and seeing where it really plays in just here before the end of the season. It was great to get those players, those experiences. And uh, you mentioned Belgrade, you mentioned West. Um, which of those two is the strongest uh, at, in your eyes? In my eyes, um, it was definitely Billings West as a team overall. Both their boys and girls teams were were pretty strong com- compared to Belgrade. Um, you know, nothing nothing against Belgrade. They do have some overall some very strong individuals. Um, and and we you know we we work on some depth issues as well. So um, it's just that Billings West had a lot more depth all the way through the lineup. You're supposed to be in Bozeman today, but uh, those postponed, the uh, Helena schools, the Bozeman and Gallatin schools were supposed to be in a duel. When are those getting made up for one? And how much of a bummer is it because you had momentum? (laughs) Right. Yeah. I mean, (laughs) they were actually a reschedule of a previous match from April 15th that did did not work out. So at this point in the season, you start, uh, there's just not really enough days to, to make, you know, make that up. We were already scheduled to meet them again on May 14th. So um, I do not have official word as to whether these will be made up or if we're just going to go ahead with the one on the 14th and call it good. But yeah, I mean, we, we had a great practice yesterday, really uh, building upon what we gained coming out of um, the Belgrade and Billings West matches Saturday. So I, I think in some ways, maybe, you know, not necessarily a bad thing, having a couple extra days of practice, just compared to a competition day, but we'll see. It, it could be a little hard getting back in that competition <laughs> seat on Saturday. Well, you get you get right back into it as you guys travel down to Butte, and it says Billings on the schedule. So you're taking on all three Billings schools, or who are we facing on on Saturday in Butte? On Saturday in Butte, we will be facing Butte, and we will see Billings West again. So oh, okay. <laughs> some of these kids, some of these kids who maybe came up a little short on uh, this last round with them, they they have a shot at some redemption sure. on Saturday. So it'll be great to see these matchups again. It's kind of a bummer though that you get West again because you know, like you mentioned, you you don't play Missoula schools a whole lot, you don't really see the Billings schools a whole lot, and there's 
three schools in Billings, and you get to play the same one in back-to-back Saturdays. <laughs> exactly. You know, sometimes it's the flip of the coin. Which which team do you end up getting? So yeah. It's just the way it goes. It, you know, yeah. a match is a match, and if we have to play the same people again, that's just the way it goes. Okay. Well, you know, you can approach it with the kids. It's like, you know, uh, Serena and, and Sharapova in the finals all the time for a long time there, or Federer and, uh, and Nadal. You know, they always played each other. And so you just get the same same ones all, all over and over, right? Exactly. That seems to be the way it goes. You know, you, you want these matchups no matter what because they make you a, a better player. You know, it doesn't matter the final score, but it's like they, they will make you a better player. And, and having to adjust from what you saw last time, maybe they're throwing a different a game plan at you, and how do you respond to it this time? Sure. Uh, it is National Paranormal Day today. Are you a, are you a believer of the paranormal? Paranormal, um, you know, it's not really anything I've followed or know much about, but anything is possible. I, I do have an open mind on that. So you believe in ghosts? You know, <laughs> why not? You know, there's, we, we hear aliens are out there too, so why would ghosts be any different? Well, that, that is a, that's a really good way to look at it. I never thought of it that way because I do believe in ghosts. I've seen them. But nobody... I, I have not. I have not had the. At least in my opinion, I have not had the opportunity to see a ghost. But I, I am sure that they can be out there. I just have not been proven to. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I have not had the proof to be able to to say so one way or another. So you didn't watch any of the Paranormal Activity movies. You know, I did, but I laughed my butt off so hard. It was funny. <laughs> <laughs> I found him so humorous. Oh, that's hilarious. Uh, Nicole Reby joining us, Helena High Tennis Coach. Hey, good luck this week. Uh, enjoy uh, the, the, uh, the time to practice and, and make yourselves better, and we'll talk to you next week ahead of Crosstown. Okay, sounds great, Jason. I appreciate the time. That is uh, Nicole Reby joining us, Mike Miller, State Farm Hotline. She's great. And uh, just, (laughs) she's awesome. Uh, Jason Walker Show rolls on. Make sure you, by the way, get on the schedule for Nitro Green uh, now for all of your lawn, tree, and pest needs. They just came out yesterday, did the first application on the yard and uh, for uh, making it look good. And they do, there's nobody better than Nitro Green. So make sure you get on the schedule now for all your lawn, tree, and pest needs. Uh, Got on this day in history coming up, the walk-off as well. And uh, I got a text. I, I, I forgot about this, but we talked about it when I was doing the Jason Walker show at the radio station before I got fired, Mr. Morris, um, two and a half years ago. There was a coach uh, at the time down in uh, Lavina, Broadview, Lavina, and he got a reprimand. And then he coached one year, I think, of girls basketball, but he got a reprimand from the school board because <laughs> he said, damn in the locker room and it was something to the effect of when you turn the ball over, doesn't it piss you off? No, <laughs> it, coaches swear. Okay. Have you ever been, okay. I, every, their beloved Carroll college, right? Got the helmet, got a helmet right over there. The old school. You ever been to a Carroll college sideline? You ever been to a basketball game? Coaches swear. You ever been to a, you ever been to a football practice or a football game? I mean, it's just. I re, I remember I remember doing a game once with Carol, uh, with uh, Greg Upham when we were uh, doing games together, and we were out at the College of Idaho, and there was no separation between the upper level and the lower level of the press box, and. Carol, after had had lost the College of Idaho a couple of times in a row, and <laughs> you hear Carol, they had the lead, they had the ball, uh, time running out in the fourth quarter, and you could hear the assistant coach up in the press box, basically saying, "Run that ball down their effing throats." And he was also the same coach that would be in the press box next to us at home games at Nelson Stadium. And sometimes you could hear F-bombs dropped or other language. It happens. Coaches are passionate about the game they love, the kids they love. If a coach swears, 
who cares? Who cares? It happens. Have you heard the way some of your kids talk, by the way? Some of the music they listen to these days? Are you kidding me? Come on. You're going to be upset about a coach cussing? Parents are ruining high school sports across the country, across the board, from coaches to administrators to officials. They're, they're, just, they're getting rid of the best of the best because they think they know better. And parents, you don't. You really don't. If you did, you'd be coaching. You'd be officiating. How soon before the kids, Jeff Welsh brings it up in his article, how soon before the kids start rebelling and saying, you know what, I'm not playing because of parents, whether it's mine, whether it's yours, I'm not playing. I don't want to hear it anymore. We're losing coaches, we're losing officials because of the lack of respect by parents and school boards. Let's do on this day in history, it is May the 3rd, It is National Teacher Appreciation Day. It is Teacher Appreciation Week. But we're losing great teachers, too, because of parents. We're losing teachers because of some teachers' egos, but we're also losing because of parents. So thank you to all the great and wonderful teachers that are also coaches. It is Chocolate Custard Day, Garden Meditation Day, Lumpy Rug Day, Paranormal Day, as we mentioned, Raspberry Popover Day, and National Two Different Colored Shoes Day. Kids these days, for like the last 10 years, have been wearing different colored socks. Now they're going to start wearing different colored shoes? Why? 1910, the Intercollegiate Athletic Association of the United States has renamed the National Collegiate Athletic Association, the NCAA. 1936, Joe DiMaggio makes his Major League debut with the Yankees, gets three hits. 1980, Giants first baseman Willie McCovey hits his 521st and final home run. 1992, New York Met Eddie Murray becomes the 24th to hit the 400 home run mark. Most of those with the Orioles. Uh, John McRae would write the great poem in Flanders Field on this date in 1915. And if you ever get a chance to go to Kansas City, go to the National World War I Museum. And they have, as you walk into the museum, you walk over the poppies. So it's, a, it's unbelievable. 1991, the 356th and final episode of the second longest running TV series ever on CBS, second only to Gunsmoke, the final episode of Dallas aired on this date in 1991. We're almost at the end of the show. What did we learn? And what did he miss? Time for the walk-off. Okay, walk-off presented by Cafe Zydeco, where the Big Easy meets the Big Sky. What did we learn today? We learned that the best Cajun food this side of New Orleans comes from Cafe Zydeco. We would learn that every day. We also learned that Clint Lang got his job back, and Hunter Sparks has a chance to uh, try out with the New England Patriots, and uh, we're very excited for that uh, former Montana Tech or Digger. And uh, we also learned that I'm not going to stand up for being called a liar or uh, have no integrity because of a uh, poor school board decision by the Jefferson High School Board. We also learned that I welcome opinions on this show. You know what else we learned? It's my show. It's called the Jason Walker Show in the above all handyman services man cave. We're going to do it again tomorrow. And if you don't like what I have to say, start your own show, Mr. Morris, or anybody for that matter. Or come on, let's debate, let's discuss. Let's have some fun tomorrow. Alex Eshelman, that's what she said. Mike Miller, Capital Softball Coach, scheduled as well. If you missed anything, go to jasonwalkershow.com. Thank you to the uh, Jefferson High community, Boulder community, for your kind words last night at the school board meeting. And thank you to those who were not supportive. Thank you. Clint Lang, happy you're back, my man. 
This has been another presentation of The Jason Walker Show. We'll see you back here tomorrow, 4 o'clock. The Jason Walker Show is produced by The Jason Walker Media Company. Any reuse, rebroadcast, or retransmission without the express written consent of The Jason Walker Show is 